simply close this window there. And we are officially live on air, and I'm hoping I'm going to say this right. It's Clementine Poiderts. Yeah, well done. Something like that. Something like, how do you say it? Um, Clementine Poiderts. That sounded very similar to the way I said it. But I'll, 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 yeah. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. But it's, it's great. It's great. And you can call me Clem if it's complicated. Clem, much easier. So, Clem, thank you so much for joining us. I just want to quickly invite uh, one more group to join us as well. I know mm -hmm. that Mr. McNulty's group are going to be uh, joining us uh, during the talk. So hopefully we'll see some windows popping up as well. Um, we, we've got a lot to talk about because... Um, you are obviously an actress and, and you're very involved with uh, various projects, but in particular, I'm wearing two hats today. Normally, I wear my living maths hat and we interview people about problem solving and that type of thing. But living maths this time around is also representing the Humans to Mars Summit, which mm -hmm. you are going to be involved with. And that's yeah. coming up uh, from the 9th to the 11th of May. And... Obviously, the topic and the theme is going to be Mars, but I know that you're not a scientist, but there's a lot of insight that you're going to be able to share with us in terms of Hollywood and science fiction, uh, in terms of how they actually put the project together, how you got involved in the whole project. So mm -hmm. there are lots of questions I want to ask you that you don't necessarily have to be a scientist to answer, but I'm looking okay. for... The, the, the passionate side. So don't worry. Don't stress. There'll be easy questions. What is the temperature? No, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the first thing is you've been acting for, for a while. You studied acting. Can you give us a bit of background in terms of how you got involved in that? Yeah, well, um, at first, well, I trained in the National Drama School in France, which is like uh, classical theater and um, very heavy theater. And um, I had the opportunity to work on a movie with Sofia Coppola on Marie Antoinette. Mm -hmm. So she's an, Amer uh, an American director. And uh, for me, it was absolutely mind blowing to work on that movie. Um, it was my first movie ever, but I, I've never thought about um, doing films. You know, I thought that it was only for like, super beautiful um, women or uh, men and that I was not interesting enough. Um, I think you're not giving yourself enough credit, but that's besides the point. So so are you saying that, that you weren't really going to, to aim for movies? You no. were just going to go for the stage or, yeah, was, or just gonna, general? I was going to go for the stage um, because I trained for it. And then I had that opportunity and it was just, for me, it was such a relief because I felt so not um, good on stage. You know, I, I'm, I'm quite little, I don't have a very big voice and I had the feeling that I was not a very good stage actress. So getting to um, work with Sophia gave me confidence and uh, it was a new world opening for me. It was really like something new for me and something I would have never thought of before. So it gave me kind of, um, yeah, it was fantastic for me to get to work with her. And then I got to work on uh, French movies and French TVs. But I've, I've never, you know, when you're French, you don't think about Hollywood and you don't think about big budget movies. You're, I, I was most, uh, mostly working on low budget movies, you know, like French movies where you cry and you smoke in a kitchen. Um, uh -huh. And I've seen a few of those, yes. <laughs> but I love them. I mean, I love French movies, but getting to work on, in, in America is, um, is a privilege, and I feel very fortunate um, to be able to do it. So you're obviously based out in France, in Paris, is that correct? Yeah, I am. And, and an opportunity came your way, but that's not your first American movie that you've done. No. So it was, So my first one was Marie Antoinette, and then... Uh, probably it was two years ago. I worked on a movie called Shut In. Okay, with Naomi Watts. It was a fantastic movie. It was, um, and I was uh, playing uh, Naomi's character's assistant. And uh -huh. for me, it was great because it was a thriller and it was something. Uh, I mean, to have the opportunity to work with Naomi Watts was just absolutely mind blowing. And I was so intimidated at first and completely starstruck. And then uh, a year later, 
yeah, I think it was a year later, I had a phone call from my agency saying, hey, there's uh, that um, Mars TV series pro produced by um, Ron Howard and uh, Brian Grazer, um, and they want you to audition for it. And I was like, I'm never going to get it. You know, I was super bad in sciences when I was in school. Uh -huh. I don't have a logical mind, and I didn't even know that we were planning to go to Mars. I'm, I'm, I was completely ignorant. Ah, so now what you're saying is that it's not because you were ignorant. It's because you just, your focus wasn't there. Your focus yes. was the stage and, and acting. And it's, and I always tell this to all the students that I work with, that of course, if someone exposes you to something that is interesting, it might then become a new interest or passion of yours. Oh yeah, completely. And you know, it's, it's not that I was not ignorant, but I think I was too lazy to open a book. And, um, you know, sometimes you have preconceived ideas when you're in school because you're not, I was not very good at mathematics uh, because I don't have a logical mind. And, um, you know, when you're in school and you're not very good, like your teachers, I don't know how it is for you guys, but in France, at least your teachers are going to tell you, oh, you're not good in sciences. And I was actually quite good in uh, um, biology and I was really interested in, in it. And but so I decided to go for more of um, oh, sorry, it cut. Are, are, are we back? No, we can hear you. We can hear you. We just can't see your picture. So you okay. might have to just click on the camera. <laughs> There's a little uh, camera icon somewhere I, there. I think I have to I have to plug my cell phone, which is why. Uh, OK. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Um, my teachers told me you're you're, you're more uh, you're gonna study literature instead of mathematics, you know, because I was not uh -huh. super good in mathematics. So, um, but and and you know, like when you you you've got good teachers and they and they they try to teach you that it can be mathematics can be fun and sciences can be fun then it also mm -hmm. changes your perception and it gives you confidence. So I think it's important as um, for kids not to be put in a box and just to try to explore it and not stop. Um, I don't know how to say it, but uh, it, yeah, like, you know, it's not because- I, I get exactly what you're saying, but you, you know, know what saddens me is that sometimes it's, it's, a, it's a timing thing that you still have the potential to, to do well in maths and science. But if it A, doesn't interest you and you have teachers that reinforce the idea that you're not good at it, then of course yeah. you're not going to pursue it. Yeah. And maybe that's their fault, not yours. Exactly. Because I remember the last year at school, uh, I had a great mathematics teacher and she, she knew that I wanted to become an actress and she told me, okay, You've got to pass because at the end of school, you have a big exam called the baccalaureate. And she uh -huh. told me, you've got to succeed in mathematics because I don't want you to go back for um, a new year at school. I want you to pursue what you want to pursue and become an actress. So you've got to work a lot and you've got to change your mind about thinking mathematics and about you are going to fail to your exams. And she helped me a lot, and she and she told me mathematics is just like a game. And mm -hmm. if you understand why you're studying mathematics, and if it becomes concrete for you, then it's going to be easier. And it got easier for me, and it was really. Um, and I passed my exam, so I was I was very uh, I was very happy. And yeah, it's important to for kids to follow their dream, and even if their teacher or said that they're not good at something. Yeah, listen to it. I mean, it's important to listen to them, but still continue. And, and, and if you've got a dream, if you want to become an astronaut and you're not good in mathematics, work hard to make it happen. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, I'm going to ask you for just to try one thing on your phone. If you yes. touch the screen, hopefully there's a little bar there that has got a, a camera with a little oh, yeah. line through it. If you click on that, then hopefully it'll bring your, your video oh. image back because... We've lost, oh, there we go. We've got you back. Yeah. And, and this is exactly what it's like going to Mars. We've had so many technical issues starting it off and trying different computers. But you see, when you have the right team of people working together, you can solve yeah. the problems. It's never an issue. <laughs> and we never a great team, 
If you've got a great team on Mars, you can do everything. Well, we're I definitely mean, going to be talking about that as well. But now, how did you audition for the Mars series? So my, so my agent called me for that, um, for Mars, and she told me, do you want to sell, send a self tape? Because as I'm based in Paris, I couldn't go to, Los, I couldn't afford to go to Los Angeles for an audition. So I sent a self tape, which is like, basically, you ask a friend of yours to read the scenes with you, and you put it on, you film it with your iPhone, and you send it to them. But most of the time... I mean, it's like a message in a bottle, you know, you never succeed and you have um, no, uh, you know, you don't even know if people are watching it, if casting directors are going to watch it or not. And they watched it. Now, and wait they a second. It. If, if I could interrupt for a second, you do realize that your mindset is that I'm sending this in, but I'm probably not going to get it anyway. So are you setting yourself up for failure so that you're not disappointed or you're just not positive that what you're giving is of your best? What, what is the story there? Well, the thing is that, um, you know, my job, most of the time when you're auditioning for something, you don't get the job, right? So you have to... Mathematically that... speaking, if you've got 100 auditions, you're probably going to get one or two or three, and, and, and unless you are an A-lister, and, and that means that 97 times you will get disappointed. I, I get that. You, you will get disappointed. But I had, I had that weird feeling because... And they were, the thing is that they were not looking for a French actress. They were, uh, at, at first, my character was supposed to be from New York. So, uh -huh. you know, that's why when I auditioned, I was like, she's, she's a woman from New York. Like, she's an astronaut, but she, she the character was American, 100% American. Her name was uh, Emily Weinberg, and they changed it to Amélie Durand when I got the job. That's but, quite, you know, uh -huh. I just wanted to have fun. And I remember it very clearly. Uh, it was a year ago uh, that I auditioned. And I remember it very clearly. I was having so much fun doing it. And, like, saying words. I Well, of course, I checked what I was saying and what was the situation and everything. And I was having so much fun, like, auditioning for, uh, like, life on Mars for the first mm -hmm. uh, Settlers on Mars. And, um, yeah, I was having fun because, you know, like in France, we don't have that kind of program. So I don't, ha I, I don't get that kind of auditions in France. So I sent my self-tape. I was seriously, I think I was crossing my fingers really hard because I had, even though I thought that it was just going to be a message in a bottle, I really had fun doing it. Mm -hmm. And, um, and yeah, I had a feeling that it could work. It's and did weird. you get the call? I got who who the gave call. you the call? <laughs> I got the call like a week after uh, from my agent saying, oh, you're on a short list. They really loved your audition. But we don't know if it's if it's uh, it was not the it was not a green light. Like I really I, I and then I had to go to London, meet the producers, the director, uh, Everard Ogut, and we spent 20 minutes or oh, 30 minutes, I can't really remember. And I was good. <laughs> I, knew I, was good. <laughs> I like it. So you felt good about it. No, it's not that I was good, but I, I worked so hard. I watched many videos about what it takes to be an astronaut, how they deal with their fears, um, how they talk to each other, and how uh, what their relationship with God, life, death. Um, and so I entered the room and I just said, hello did my scenes and then mm -hmm. I went away and I, I could, you know, I, I didn't waste too much time being nice and kind and funny. I just did my job and um, yeah, I had a good feeling after that. And at least, you know, when you're auditioning, sometimes you feel a bit uh, frustrated because you didn't, you didn't do uh, your best or you didn't give your best. And, and for that audition, I knew that I, I did my best really my best but i've worked i've worked a lot and i wanted to be prepared because i knew that everardo was going to ask me to improve um to improve to wow. uh, improvise <laughs> if and you gave your best and he wants you to improve how does no, no, how do you go he, to the next I, level i knew that he that he um he was going to ask me to improvise so i checked on the internet like astronaut terms and jargons and like a weird um uh, disease cat or with catastrophes that could happen on Mars. Uh, and, and then I 
fell in love with Mars. Seriously, it's I know that it's, it sounds like super cheesy corny to say that, uh -huh. but I was, after just re reading and watching videos about Mars, about astronauts, about the NASA, about SpaceX, I was like, oh my God, like, I didn't know that, but it's so fascinating and it's so, it's amazing. I mean, uh, because, and I discovered that we were actually going to go to Mars and that we needed to go to Mars. And, mm -hmm. and, 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 and since that moment where I discovered it, I, I'm, I was just like hooked and I wanted to go there. And I was, it's changed my life. Just knowing that in, in within like 10, 15 years, I'm kind of an optimistic person, but I think that within 15 years, 20 years, there will be people on Mars. We will not be the center of the universe anymore. And it's going to change everything. And what we thought was completely impossible years ago is going to be possible. And we're going to watch it live. I mean, can you imagine? It's going to be mind blowing. It's going to change everything <laughs> forever. Do you know why I'm smiling? I'm smiling because your moment where you've just realized the excitement of space and Mars, I get to do every day in the classroom. I get to expose the kids to something new and exciting and that's when they start thinking wow mars is an option mars is quite exciting and not just mars space maths whatever it is you know it's important to expose kids to what we call the stem related subjects science technology engineering maths and now they're adding in arts as well to call it steam and i think it's very important that if you're not exposed to it you don't know that you won't like it unless you actually get exposed to it Exactly. So now we've got a Mars fan in you, which I'm very excited about. And, and of course, you, you, you hear that Ron Howard and, 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 and Glaze are involved in this thing. I mean, this is, these guys are not your average producers, directors. I mean, these guys are, are huge. These guys They've done are some of the huge. biggest movies in Hollywood. Yeah. I mean, can you imagine Ron Howard? He directed... The first movie I've seen, which was Willow, and then uh -huh. he directed Apollo 13. I mean, Apollo 13, you can watch it now. And it's, I mean, you still have the same excitement. And it was so, and the way they shot it, you know, they shot it in like planes that were going down so that they could um, experience the, the, the gravitational planes. The zero gravity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he had that crazy idea. And, uh, you know, when he directed it, everybody was looking at him like, Hey, dude, like you're crazy. Like, you know, we call it like the, the vomit plane or something. The like vomit this. comet. Like, yep. Exactly. <laughs> uh huh. But um, I mean, they're, they're, uh, yeah, I mean, I feel so blessed and honored just to be working with them. And I, I nearly collapsed when I met them. You know, I was so <laughs> now, how does that affect you? I mean, you come in, you're intimidated because you first submit your audition then they say yes we kind of like you let's meet you and already they've got this tension building you get to meet them they go yes we like you and you walk out going yes and now you actually have to meet these icons and then guess what you realize they're actually just normal people they are normal or, or people. it's going to take a while to to get around that yeah yeah it's it's um it's crazy you know when you get to meet people you really admire and people who, who you know made movies or people who are for me genius and like people i really respect um it's very intimidating and you're just like you have the feeling that you're in a dream but it's actually super real uh -huh. i mean you can touch them and you're working with them so um there is something a bit nerve-wracking and, um, but they're like, and the way they're doing their jobs, I mean, they're so generous and they're so, um, they're so passionate about what they're doing, you know, and all Mars was, the, the series Mars was about pushing the boundaries of storytelling also by mixing uh, reality and documentary elements, elements and uh, the okay. fiction. Um, I, and I think they had the, the best idea because uh, you're watching a fiction with actors, but at the same time, you realize that we are like that far away from going to Mars. And I that mean, that, that was the key, that, that this particular series, what made it so fascinating is that they did combine real interviews, real footage with 
combined with the actual landing on Mars, which is the fictional part, but it was quite seamless in the way they put it together. And it, I mean, yeah. I know many of the people who they were interviewing. Uh, these are the guys from NASA and from, from uh, the various organizations. And I'm thinking, GPL. what great acting. It's just phenomenal. And then I realized, no, these are just past interviews that they've put together. But, but the actual interviews that they chose and the footage that they put together, it, it really, I mean, whoever did the editing deserves uh, a couple of awards there. That okay, really, yeah. it made it such an incredible story. But, but now, and now I think we've lost your picture again. Oh, no, you're back again. <laughs> Am I back again? Yeah, you're back again. Okay. I think what happens is if you touch the screen, are you holding the phone while you're speaking? Yeah, I am. Is it not easier for you to just put it on something? I'm going to put it on something, but I have to unplug myself. Plug, That's okay. We this is what spontaneity is all about. We're going on a little tour of yeah. Chez uh, Poidet. Chez Mademoiselle Poidet, exactly. There we go, Chez Mademoiselle Poidet. You see, my French is improving already. Yeah, I'm really impressed. So, I mean, um, what I'm always amazed is is that you know, obviously for you, it it, it is an acting gig, but but it's not acting, so to speak, because you're learning about what space is actually like. Mm. Uh, you're learning, no, no, you can't actually do this because that wouldn't be realistic. You're learning that no, you can't do it that way because uh, that wouldn't actually come across or translate very well. So you're learning about actual space itself, the travel to get to Mars. So from your understanding, what were the complexities of getting to Mars? Now, that's much better. Don't you feel that you don't have to hold your hands up? What is your understanding of getting to Mars as human beings for us? What is the, the, the complexity that you think? Uh, the complexity to go to Mars? Um, mm -hmm. uh, for me, Clementine? Or for, well, no, no, as, as humans, for what you've lived through the acting. I mean, you, you, you obviously take on the role as Amelie. And, well, you're, and you're, going, you're going to the unknown. You're going to experience something like you're going to go so far away from planet Earth that you can't have a direct contact with your loved ones. Um, you're, going, you're going to a an completely uninhabited planet. I mean... And I think, I don't know, I, I think that's the biggest challenge. I mean, the, the first people that will go are to Mars. I don't know how they're going to react to that, because even though we are, like, um, doing some experiments, you know, in high seas or in different places, just to see how a group of people can survive far away from home for mm -hmm. six months and blah, blah, blah. It's not the same because the first people who go to Mars, it will be a one-way ticket. So knowing that you're not going to come back, that you won't be able to see your loved ones, that you're abandoning your life on Earth. And in a way, it's just as if you were dead on Earth. I mean, I don't know if like the, the astronauts will go to Mars will, will still have like a bank account on planet Earth. Uh -huh. It'll be completely useless, you know? And how does your brain react to that? I have no idea. How does your brain react to the fact that you're alone on a big planet? Because even if it's not as big as planet Earth, it's like big, right? Like, uh -huh. and, and, and you don't see clouds, you don't see, you don't hear the sea, you don't hear, there, there are no birds, like, you don't, all you know, all you've always known is gonna disappear so it's like i don't know how you can adapt yourself to this i mean that is probably the biggest challenge and there's another challenge that we don't know how a spaceship can actually land on mars because of the very thin atmosphere and because of the gravity like there, there are some things we're not very sure about and um yeah i think that's the biggest challenge for the first people who, who go to mars it's uh and um how you react, like it's gonna be like a small colony at first. Like in our um, series, we're six to go to Mars. So it's, um, I think it's gonna be tricky. I think that, um, I think it's gonna be marvelous 
I think it's going to be amazing for them because they've been dreaming of it. I mean, people who go to Mars, they, they, they would have been dreaming about it for years and trained for it for years. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be such a big achievement that, um, that it's going to be fine. But there are some things that we don't know. We really don't know how your brain and your psyche can adapt to that. Well, I think this is the interesting part, that if you look at the fact that it takes so long to get there, and then when you get there, there are no certainties. And if you've been watching the series, and I know that we've got a whole bunch of viewers that are watching the, the live stream, so hello to all the viewers from all over the world. Hello. And we've got Mr. McNulty in the USA. We've got Govinda in Nepal. And we've got Beatrix. Beatrix, I'm not sure where you are. You're probably in, in Germany, I'm guessing. Um, you can just type in the um, in the chat if you'd like to ask any questions, and then uh, at some point we'll we'll give you a chance to uh, to ask uh, Clem Clemmy a question. Um, what I'm amazed at is that it, it it's probably one of the greatest challenges that we've ever faced as as a planet, because yeah. we know that that the Mar the, the moon at the time. The fact that they even got there on such little technology and they landed and they got them back again was just an absolute miracle. But now to travel this far, to get to a planet that is not exactly the most hospitable, but yeah. it's doable. But when we get there, like you said, there is a very good chance that it is a one-way ticket. Now, there are different projects that are on at the moment. The NASA are trying to get people there and to bring them back mm -hmm. and Elon Musk is quite happy to send them there. And, and as you would know that he's also another crazy ex South African. Um, there <laughs> are so many people that are, are trying to get there. And now of course, other countries have stepped in and said, no, no, we're going to get there first. So the Mars race is, is real. It's happening. And I think that 2030 is not even an optimistic date. I think it's going to happen maybe 2025, 2027. I mean, it's, it's going to happen. 2027. 2027. Okay, let's, we're going to go with that one. We'll put money on that one and we'll see what happens. Yeah, I put it's money just, on 2027. It's crazy that, 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 that the technology is improving um, every day, a new rocket, a new engine. Things are just happening. And now there's this project called Mars One. I'm sure you know about them, yeah. where they are on a one-way ticket there. They're not planning to come back. And I happen to know a couple of them from South Africa who've been chosen in the top 100. And in particular, Adriana, she's hoping to make the top 24. Now, Adriana's got her doctorate. She is a smart woman. She's working in the corporate world. She's a, an astrobiologist. She's, she's just absolutely brilliant. And the question is, why would you go on a one-way mission? And you know what her response know. was? She says... This is the greatest expedition that we as Earthlings have ever, ever been on. And we're all going to die at some point. And if she had the choice to either die here or on Mars, she'd take Mars anytime. No questions asked. Oh, yeah. But I'll go there. If I, if I have the opportunity, I'll go there. I don't have kids. That's, the only, mm -hmm. you know, I don't, I think that if I have kids, I would say, no, no way. Well, after watching the first series, that might change in the second series. You never know. <laughs> because, <laughs> but I'm not going to give too many spoiler alerts. <laughs> so I don't know what you're so, talking about. Seriously. Oh, no. Isn't there, a, a, isn't there a, a relationship between you oh, and yeah. another character? Yeah, sure. Of course, I'm French. So, of course, there is a relationship. <laughs> well, there we go. Then. <laughs> so, so, what, okay. So, now the, the, the cast... And, and you've obviously got a, a great cast working with you. Oh, yeah. Uh, these are a, a collection of, of amazing actors. Can you tell us a little bit about the cast as well? Oh, they're fantastic. Uh, they're like my family. Like, there's not a single day where we're not on WhatsApp and we're not ex exchanging messages. Uh, so there is Jihei, who is the lead because she plays two roles. She plays. I was going to say, she does play sisters, yeah. And that was her first. Um, she's a singer. And that was her first time working as an actor. And what? she just killed it. Yeah. No, she is definitely nailing that one. Both, both roles. She's, she's amazing. She's really amazing. 
And uh, then we have Ben, uh, we, yep. uh, our commander, who is played by Ben Cotton, who is a uh, it was amazing too. I mean, all my castmates, I really love them. They're like my family, like brothers and sisters. And there's uh, Alberto Aman, who is mm -hmm. um, who plays my um, the love interest. Uh -huh. <laughs> my love interest in the series, and he's from uh, Spain. Uh, Ana Maria Marinka, who's uh, from Romania, and she lives in England, and she's uh, very clever, witty, funny, and. Uh, We've got Sammy Rotibi, uh, who is American, who, who plays Robert Foucault. And we're, we're co all coming from different parts of the world. I mean, mostly they're American, uh, but they're, um, the fact that we're coming from, the, from, you know, like different places in the world is great because we are so different. At first, it was a bit intimidating for me because I'm more used to be working with uh, French people, of course. So, you know, we have the same kind of, um, uh, you know, seeing the world and we already know each other and we have like friends in common, blah, blah, blah. And on that project, I knew no one. I was just mm -hmm. like, it, it was the first time I knew absolutely no one. And so you really were, in a sense, exploring a new world because you were put into a, a Hollywood type production with people that you had never met before effectively this is what it's going to be like traveling to mars you're going to be with people that you don't always know that you're going to be going on an adventure that you can never predict what's going to happen that's quite yeah. a scary thing it's quite a scary thing but at the same time it's very cool because you don't have to i don't know and you know the fact that we didn't know each other and that we're all shooting far away from home uh we had to bond very um rapidly and because uh -huh. we're, we, we we needed to be a team so we spent all our time together no kidding like we had lunch together breakfast together we're working together we trained together uh we even uh we spent some holidays together you know it's like um i know it's it's something that every actor say on every project but we are like a family we were and i love them i, I love them and uh they're, I, I don't know. I, I just want to hug them when I, when I talk about them. <laughs> that is and, absolutely and because awesome. it was hard. It was hard. I mean, no no one knew anything about Mars, except probably Sammy or TV. He knew a lot. But the rest of us, it was just a new world for us. So we well, I don't believe you because you guys are so convincing. You must have known lots about Mars. Either that or you are brilliant actors. Brilliant actors. I did not even know what the galaxy was, or I did not even know that there were all the solar system. Like I heard, I've heard it, but I didn't know what it meant. You know. So then, I'm very grateful that we've now recruited a new science fan because of this project, and hopefully, now that you've been given the go ahead for the second series, that that's going to lead to some more excitement. Uh, and obviously, you're not allowed to give any spoilers for that. But but the way they ended off the first series, that was not fair. Oh yeah. That that I mean, can you imagine? I don't know what they're going to do next. But but now, before we carry on, I know that Mr. McNulty, your group has joined us as well. And Ryan, he looked like he wanted to ask a question. So Ryan, why did you come up and and ask me a question? <laughs> okay, Ryan. Uh, oh. Thank you. Hello. <laughs> Yeah. Do, 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 do you remember how to turn the volume off over there? Oh, okay, go ahead. Okay. Right. Fire away. Hi, uh, what made you want to like come on the show? Like, why did you want to do it? Uh, well, you know, when you have such an opportunity to play an astronaut in a TV series, in an American TV series, um, produced by Ron Howard, you, you, you just want to do it. And also the fact that I knew absolutely nothing about space exploration and everything, it was kind of, I mean, it's great to work on something you don't know and discover a new world. So that was very exciting for me. That was probably one of the most exciting thing um, because I've learned so many things. And, uh, you know, when, when you grow up, you sometimes you kind of lose tracks of the fact that you want to learn new things. You, you feel like you live your life um, like,
like on a comfortable way and you're always it's about being in your comfort zone and not stepping out of your comfort zone yeah and That's i love stepping out of my comfort zone and not um yeah and for me it was I was so scared and I thought that I was a big miscast because I was not good at school again. Uh, but um, for me, it was a big challenge. And I think that you need challenge to, um, yeah, to, to move and to move forward and to be a better human being. And to we need to open ourselves to things that we don't know. And we need to, I mean, yeah, we need to be curious. Absolutely. I, I mean, no one ever now. grew staying the I same. <laughs> I think that we really need to be curious. And uh, I think that right now, our society, we're not curious anymore. Um, I'm, sometimes I'm wondering where is our curiosity. And I think that social medias and everything are great. But books are amazing. And discovering new things and trying new things and, and just yeah step away from your comfort zone is probably what makes you a better human being and um and it, it's something that builds you also that can that can um define you more and then you know like i don't wake up in the morning the same way i was waking up in the morning before mars because now when i wake up in the morning i'm like hey i'm quite lucky i live on planet earth because mars is a is not a as friendly as planet earth right and i feel quite lucky because i'm alive now and I'm, i hope i'll be able to watch live the first people the first footsteps on the people on mars and i think that uh, we should be happy to like now i feel that i'm more grateful to be alive <laughs> thanks to mars I believe so. But now we want to go into a little bit of the series. I'm not sure if everyone has seen the series, but it's about a, a group of people that that uh, have uh, literally taken the big journey. And you can imagine, I mean, people like Buzz Aldrin, Neil Armstrong, when you mention their names, um, Collins, I mean, people, they don't forget those names in a hurry because they were the first pioneers to, to reach the moon. Uh, Whoever lands on Mars, that's going to be way bigger. And with yeah. social media and everything else, that go, I mean, that is reaching the pinnacle of, of all exploration. So I'm sure there's no shortage of people who are putting up their hand who want to be there, to be the first person on Mars. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if the first person was told, you are going to put your foot on the planet. And as they do, someone dives out and puts their hand down and say, I did it first. I'm, I mean, I mean, it really is uh, quite a, a title to have, being yeah. the first person on Mars. So, so now in the series, you've got a group of people who are traveling to Mars, but problems happen on the journey getting there. Hmm. And that can happen. We were trying to get the interview going. Technology just yeah. kind of failed us for a bit, but we yeah. managed to get it right through a little bit of problem solving. You guys had to do some problem solving. What was the main issue? on your journey there um, that, that obviously uh, played an important role with one of your characters. Sorry, sorry. I'm... So, so, so one of your characters, his name starts with Ben, um, something happened to him. And, yeah, and obviously that affected the, the rest of the program. What happened? Can I say it? You can. You are allowed to say it. Absolutely. Okay. Because the series is on... It's already available. So these are, we're giving you spoiler alerts now that we will be talking about the series and hopefully you'll go and, and actually watch at least the first or second episode to, to get into it. Yeah, yeah. So um, when we land on Mars, we have, our commander has a problem and um, I have to treat him because I'm the physician and biochemist on that mission. And uh, well, something bad happens to him because of course, it's something to to have a health problem on planet Earth. It's something different to to face a health problem on Mars. Uh, by the way, there are some people on Twitter who insulted me because I was not able to save our uh, to 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 save our commander and to. Um... <laughs> There's some people that don't make the difference between me, the, uh, me, Clementine, and my character. So they were like, 
you should die. You should die. You, you, Are you serious? Commander. I I didn't kill him. It, it, there was nothing <laughs> I could do. Uh -huh. I just want to make it clear. If there are some okay, so so you obviously play the doctor in the series, yes. and and if you are going up to space, you do realize that if you're only taking one doctor, and something happened to you, they're in a little bit of trouble. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, people but are. Now, I mean, we. I mean, the the thing is that people go to Mars, and it's the same thing for uh, the Apollo mission and everything. They're trained together, so I knew that my um, my my crew, well, our crew, were was going to Mars. They had they knew the, some some stuff about um, you know they, they they could be doctors too. You know, we <laughs> all train together so that we we can all help together. Uh, I'm not just a physician and biochemist. I'm also um, you know I'm I'm you know I. I of an engineer, and, and, and that you type have to of be thing. like you, you have to have different skills in order to go to Mars, or even in space. Um, you know, when even like people who went to the moon, they were trained to do different things. You can't just be an astronaut, you have to train to be a doctor, you, you have to train to be uh, uh, whatever. Uh, but, um, flight instructor, the engineer, yeah, yeah. the the someone who I don't know who can fix certain things i mean obviously you, you need you to be multi-skilled yeah uh -huh. you, have to, you have to have different skills and and uh, and the, and the first settlers uh, the first thing that they have to find is uh well they need they need to find water because without water we're nothing so that's uh, the, the that's that was our first uh, mission it was was to find water and to find also lava tube to go live under the surface of um, mars uh, and why were the lava tubes so important because because of the radiations uh, you need to go under the surface so that you're not exposed to too much radiation just and look also at the scientists over here. I'm loving this. <laughs> and also, yeah, well, I'm yeah. Loving Mars, you know. So I <laughs> no, I'm loving this. Because also, you, you, um, I mean, before we arrived, they sent some, um, they sent a workshop. I mean, in in my mission, like uh, again, I haven't been on Mars. I'm just an actress. Just so okay. <laughs> <laughs> to those who are on Twitter, just be careful. They, it wasn't her. <laughs> so they, they sent a workshop before we arrived and they sent a robber and they sent like different thing that was like on unmanned mission. And when we arrived, we have a workshop, but it's not enough. And we have a problem in that workshop anyway. So we need to find another another place to go live. And because we know that... Um, there are lava tubes. There are like lava tubes are like a thing that like go that goes very that goes very deep and uh -huh, like, like a crevasse. Like, like a crevasse, exactly. Yes. And mm -hmm. you can you can uh, build something like an an habitat there, um, and it's very important also because there are uh, some um, there are months where there are storms like dust storms. Mm -hmm. And you know, dust is very bad. It can go in, in, into you know, it's it. You, you don't want to be outside it during a dust storm. Um, but also, the equipment doesn't want to get dust in it because it can yeah. affect the equipment. It, it it can affect the equipment, and you need oxygen. So if it affects like your system where the oxygen goes, it's it's a disaster. So uh, you really need to go um, under the surface. So and so you need that. You need a shelter, and you need water. And um, so, the, and, and the first colonists will, I mean, are, 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 will need to be able to do different things because we also need people uh, to, 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 to make um, plants grow. We, we're we're going to need like different types of people, not just astronauts, but people with uh, very uh, various skills and um, yeah, and knowledge. Okay. Well, I mean, I and know we that Mr. Need Mac... optimistic people. Because... You, completely, completely. We had Mr. McNulty's group who had to leave, and then Beatrix. She wanted to know. <laughs> she was just too shy. I think she's the problem with the. She's on Hangout and the iPad. She wanted to know why I would suggest that it's going to happen at 2027, and and just looking at, if you look at how the space race has developed over the past, I don't know. 
30 or 40 years, and then you take just the last five years, yeah. and you look at the exponential growth in the number of rockets that have been launched, in terms of the technology, in terms of 3D printing the engines, in terms of the costs, uh, industry, because they are not beholden to what government has to do, they're going to push people to go a little bit further. And commercial space travel, within the next two or three years, you will be able to buy a ticket and circumnavigate Earth and then come back again. That's yep. just uh, inevitable. And, and Mars is a little bit more challenging because obviously it's an eight or, or, or nine month journey, depending on when you actually leave Earth yep. heading towards Mars. But the yep. one thing that I found interesting is that as a physician on, in the actual show, because I know you're not a physician, um, the mental state plays a very important role with people who are stuck on another planet. And, yep. and it actually does end up causing a huge problem in the series. Yeah. Yeah. So, so who watches your mental state? <laughs> well, it's, it's true that, um, I mean, again, you don't know how your brain, how your, how it affects your brain and your psyche. And yeah, it's someone in, um, the second mission that goes to Mars, not the second, but you know, like, um, um, I think it's four years after we first landed on Mars. There are some other people. There's a group of people coming to Mars uh, to work on plants. Uh -huh. And uh, one of them, uh, yeah, is, um, how should I say it? It's, um, it's a very intense character. I must just tell you that when you first play, meet him. A, an amazing actor, John. John Light. Wow. Amazing he, he, actor. He you, you know when you feel uncomfortable about someone, but you, you kind of allow them to carry on because they're very good at what they do and they're very confident about what they do, but you always know at the back of your mind there's something yeah. not right here. There's something wrong, yeah. There's something wrong, but, you know, I, I mean, my character could not be too pushy. I, I couldn't be too, like, oh, you, you look weird today, huh? Uh -huh. You know, like, and um, and also people need some space, and and it's true that my character, uh, my character as a psych psychologist, I, I can't follow them all the time, and I can't check on them all the time, and it's normal that people get depressed, and it's true that I couldn't see it coming. It's true, my character could not see that catastrophe coming because at some point, can I? Is it really nice if I tell the the story? Well, you, you know what? You can mention it. We're just going to tell people that there's a spoiler alert and they must just block their ears if they don't want to hear what's going to happen next. But the series is finished, isn't it? Yeah, the, 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 yes. The first it's, season is over. So fair's fair. I mean, you can mention it. Absolutely. Okay. So we're, we're at some point we're stuck during a, a dust storm and there's nothing we can do. And we've got like... Um, um, how can I say that? Like power or electricity issues, and um, and the, uh, Paul Richardson, who is in charge of um, of the plants and uh, needs some light, extra light to make plants grow, and he can't really work because of the problem with the electricity and the power. Um, and at some point is so desperate that he's having some hallucination and some weird stuff. And yeah, he just, something goes wrong. I'm not going to spoil it entirely. Okay. You don't want to spoil it. I know it's in your heart. You can't do that. But I, I know that but, Beatrix. You know, something goes wrong. But, and it's true. Like every person will react differently on Mars with uh, things that far away with, the idea sometimes we get stuck for months on Mars just because of a dust storm and you're so vulnerable. How do you deal with that? You are so vulnerable on Mars, you know, just like something like just, just a small leak in your habitat and you die. I mean, it's um, so, yeah, it's, 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 it's hard. And, and that, I think that's one of the biggest mystery about Mars is how we'll be able to adapt ourselves to that. Look, we've landed rovers on Mars. We've, we've got quite a few that are moving around and, and some have already ended their journey. 
and I mean, Curiosity is still busy tweeting yeah. and sending us photographs, which is amazing. But the human being aspect is definitely something that we, we and that's why NASA is so cautious about just sending people and, and bring them back and saying that we're going to do it by 2030 because they want to be able to take the time to get it right. But of course, if they rush it, they are going to have a, a catastrophe on their hands and that's the one thing they don't want. But then oh, you yeah. get private business. We don't care. We're taking risks because we know we can do it. Yeah. And I, and think, that's gonna that, be a I think that Elon is going to, I mean, I, I don't know what you think about it, but I think Elon Musk is most, I mean, is going to do it. Um, um, I agree. But is your, anything that is going to go, he'll send human to Mars by 2025. So I'm like, he's a bit too optimistic. So I, this is why I am saying 2027. 20, yeah, I'll, I'll go with 27 as well. Years, so. <laughs> Give them a little bit of a chance. 2027. And, um, and it's true that, I, I, you know, NASA before, before The Martian, the movie The Martian, NASA didn't even have people working on Mars. And it's because of The Martian that they decided to put someone working on the, on the Mars mission. But before, there was absolutely no one working on it in the NASA. That's what uh -huh. Stephen Petronic told me. So we need a guy like, I mean, he's a genius. Look at what he's done. Um, um, Elon Musk is just a genius. And he doesn't he have boundaries. He doesn't allow the boundaries to, you know, he climbs out of his comfort zone and he finds another 50 oh, yeah. others that don't even belong to him. And he climbs in and he just makes himself comfortable, which I think is absolutely amazing. Look at what he, he, he's done last year. Everybody, ex Especially in France, people were saying, you know, like Ariane Espace, they were saying, this guy is crazy. He's, not, he's never going to uh, succeed in doing this, when, you know, with the spaceship. A vertical rocket and then landing it. <laughs> I mean, that was, that was amazing. When I saw it, I would, and it was, I think it was before we started working on Mars. I remember I saw it and I was just blown away. This is mind blowing. The guy succeeded him just alone he succeeded to do something and everybody was telling it everybody was saying that the guy was just crazy no he has done it he's done it and it's gonna change the, the face of the world and it's gonna change everything. i agree i agree and now of course if you look at how long nasa has been around and you look how long spacex has been around the success that he's had in the short space that he's been around is is nothing short of phenomenal yeah. But of course, I know we've got some other people over here. I know that we've got um, uh, Sumit in, in uh, could be in India, and we've got Govind in Nepal. Do you guys want to ask any questions? If you do, you can just unmute yourself, or you can type in your question. And of course, uh, Beatrix in Hungary, she had to leave, uh, as did uh, Mr. McNulty. And we've still got quite a few viewers from around the world who are actually watching this live as well which is amazing. And those people who didn't get a chance to watch it live get to watch it uh, at a later stage because it's all saved on a YouTube video as well. Now, going back to the Humans to Mars Summit, that is coming up in May. Are you going to physically be there? I wanted to go there, but I can't because I'll be shooting. So, but Because be you're going to be shooting the second season? We'll be shooting late, uh, no, later. The second season, we'll shoot it later. We're going to so when can we summer. expect one episode of the second season? I have no idea. Seriously, I have no idea. I, I, I can't. There, there is nothing. I have no idea what's going to happen in the second season. Uh -huh. I think that what could be very interesting is to talk about um, who Mars belonged to. I now, mean, that is something Mars? I will be addressing. Mars, there is a thing called space law. And, and, and it's a real field, and they're all busy talking about what belongs to who, and, and if you're going to go and send uh, ships there to go and mine all the, the minerals, uh, who does it belong to? There, there's definitely a, a, a massive uh, question mark around that. I do know that uh, Sumit had a question. So, Sumit, do you want to you ask the question yourself? You can just unmute yourself. Here you come, Sumit. There we go. Oh, he wants to ask, what are your thoughts on the future prospects of humans to travel to Mars? 
So in terms of what does the future hold? So when we first get there, then we're going to put a little bit of a colony. And then what's going to happen after that? Do you think we're going to mess up that planet like we've done our own? No. Well, again, there's... um. I know some people don't think that we deserve a, a backup planet or that we deserve a second chance or that, you know, and that we're going to ruin Mars, like we ruined uh, or that we're um, ruining, ruining <laughs> our, our planet. I think that we learned or we are learning our lessons and that we, um, we should, we're going to cherish Mars and, and um, either like try to, um, make it more earth-like or not but i think that yeah there will be mars is just a first step in um in the um, in the um, space travel i think that we're gonna go probably i'll be dead by by then but we're, we're gonna go explore other galaxies and other solar systems and uh i think that mars is a first step to for that and um and I think that we deserve a second chance. I, I mean, it's most likely, and I don't want to be a downer, but it's most likely that uh, life on planet Earth is going to disappear at some point. I don't know when. Mm -hmm. um, and I realized it working on Mars that, I mean, the moon, we wanted to go there, but Mars, we have to go there in order to, because we need to become an interplanetary species so mm -hmm. um, i think that mars is just a first step and that and then we can we're going to be able to go further but we need to work on engines and because it, it's going to take like years and years and years and years to go outside of our solar system i don't even know if it's doable i mean i think that it well that, that is one of the problems that just years? the trapper system of planets they've just discovered would probably take us a few uh, 100,000 years to, to travel there. So that kind of puts it out of our, our, our reach at the moment. But you never know what we invent in years to come. Yeah, so, so now, I think that Mars is just a first step. But then um, I think that there will be a colony. And I don't know if, if we, we, we succeed in creating an ecosystem, then it, life would be possible on, on Mars. And people within like... Um, um, thousands and thousands of years people will be able to breathe freely uh, if we uh -huh. have that ecosystem and if we terraform mars i know that there are some people who are against terraforming mars and some people who are pro i have no idea i think that um i, I have no idea i mean i'm not a specialist about it um i, I kind but of like the idea of terraforming mars what excites me the most is that here is someone who tells me, you know, I wasn't such a big fan of maths and science at school and, and you know, I wasn't the, 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 the best student. But here you are giving this wonderful presentation on terraforming and lava tubes. And uh, it's amazing <laughs> that you are so switched on. And, and I'm hoping that this series will also switch on younger people. And I think that's probably why they did the series, to get a lot more STEM content out to a younger generation um, and because the series was so well received you've now been granted the second series and you don't obviously know when that's going to be happening so i know that we are going to be very excited about watching that and 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 we all going to say ah oh, we know clemmy she's such a great <laughs> person and i and i just want to give one shout out to helene because oh, yeah. we have a mutual friend helene she sent oh, yeah. she sent a message on facebook I actually know Clement, I, say, I know, and I'm going to mention you in the interview as well. So, Helene oh, Derby, who, and it's actually Helene's sister's birthday today, so happy birthday, oh. babe. And oh, yeah, uh, birthday. I, I do want to say that um, we've had a lot of people who've joined us watching it live. Thank you so much for joining us. Clem, this is your moment now. What advice would you give to people? I'm going to ask you two questions. A, what advice would you give to people if they want to get into the acting industry and want to be a big star like you, because right now they call you an up and coming star. Does that mean that, that on the list 
you're moving towards the A level or you're already at the A level. I, I don't know what that means. And, and does the series mean that you're going to get more acting roles because you've been with, with Ron Howard? I don't know. But, and the second question is, um, what is your hope in terms of space exploration and Mars? What is your hope? Because uh, we've seen that Hollywood has now started putting loads of movies about Mars over the past five or six years. It's probably increased on a, on a, on a monthly basis, new releases all the time involving Mars or the trip to get to Mars or things that are coming from Mars. Uh, so, so let's go back to question number one. What advice would you give young people who are aspiring to be actors or actresses? Um, I think it would be my advice for the young generation in general because whatever you want to do, just, I mean, just listen to your dreams and that little voices that tell you, um, I want to do this or I want to do that. Don't let grown ups say, tell you that you can't do that. I mean, if I had listened to my teachers telling me, uh, oh no, but you can't be an actress. I mean, I'm not from a, I don't have a, um, a family that comes from theater nor cinema nor anything like this. So at first they were looking at me as if I was telling them, hey, I want to be a rock star, you know? Uh -huh. uh, so listen to, listen to your dreams and just make it possible. And by saying that, I mean, work, work, work. Follow your dreams and dream big. I mean, you, you, we need the young generation to dream big. I mean, you know, sometimes I'm, I'm like, I'm quite sad for my generation because when I ask my parents what global event they remember the most in their life or what world event they remember the most, it was uh, July 1969, the Apollo mission. What, you know, they remember exactly what they were eating, where they were, what they were wearing. They remember everything. And it's uh, like, it's, it's such an amazing, you know, it's, it's such an amazing, uh, an, an amazing thing to witness. What I uh -huh. remember the most is, well, it's a catastrophe, September uh, 2001. Absolutely. So, so that is the reality so of just, that our world is facing. If, it's just as if we could not dream anymore, you know, and, uh, and, uh, and we need hope. We need hope. And, which is why I'm, I'm, I, I want to tell the young generation, yeah, follow your dreams, have big dreams and hope and wonder and look at the sky and just, and just see how immense it is. And, you know, just knowing that Mars, and we saw that Mars was impossible. We saw it as like a, a, a crazy thing, you know, like, um, and knowing that the impossible is going to be possible within 10 years. I mean, it should give the young generation like the will to, to, to take their lives in their hand and just follow their dreams. So yeah, I, this is my advice for um, people who want well, to- Well, I, I, can, I can tell you now, you're in very good company because when I interviewed the head of NASA, Charlie Bolton, he said the same thing. Don't let people tell you what you can and can't do because yeah. if you want to do it, then you should follow those dreams. Of course, if it's something negative, like you know, mass murder, that's not a good thing. But but if you want to be uh, in in uh, an astronaut, or, or or if you want to be in the acting field or science, whatever it is, if that's your dream, rather spend the rest of your life doing what you're passionate about than working in a field that you don't actually enjoy. Oh yeah, sure, sure, and it's so important because life is short. But when you're not happy with your life, life is super long. You know what I mean? Like, of course, and we're, of course. we're so lucky to be alive and we're so lucky. We have to remember it. And we are so lucky because we can make choice. And so, yeah, I think it's really important for people who want to become an actor, people who want to become an astronaut. Everybody's going to tell them, oh, it's not an actual career that people do, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. So give yourself a favor and just work to make it happen and to prove to everyone else that they were wrong, you know? That's the nicest feeling of satisfaction when you can actually do that. And then the yeah. last thing we're gonna end off with is, is um, what is your dream or your hope? Now that you've been involved in the first season of, of, uh, of Mars, uh, which I must just tell you, 
you know, when you watch the actual footage and you put it together with the real life, it really is a captivating series. It, it, it is an outstanding series. Um, what is your dream or your hope for us as human beings when it comes to uh, space exploration and, and Mars, um, just from your experience? Well, I hope that, I hope that you, we're going to get, I mean, people are going to get to dream more and more and be more and more and have more and more the feeling that it's going to happen soon. Because mm -hmm. it literally changed my life knowing that we we're going to go there. It's not just sci-fi now. It's, it's actually, it's the reality and it's going to happen super soon. And I think that people should know it. I mean, I think that even in school, uh, teachers should talk about it and, and show images of Mars and, and, you know, show how beautiful it is. I mean, we have pictures of Mars that are absolutely breathtaking. And Mars is such a beautiful challenge to overcome. And I mean, like, we need all the different countries to work together hands in hands in such a beautiful yeah, it's a beautiful challenge to overcome and it takes human beings and it's going to be risky. And um, so let's dream about it. And, and, and I think we should stop looking at Mars as a science fiction thing. And make it science be, fact. And make it science fact because it's going Maybe. to happen soon and it's going to change everything. So, yeah, I want people to dream about Mars and, uh, and about space exploration. And it also gives you... I don't know, but I think it makes you a bit more, more clever in a way. Uh, just to think that we're just a tiny little planet, you know, like we're, we're nearly nothing. And there's so like, it's, it's so immense and we have, so, <laughs> we have so many things to discover. And I think it's really inspiring. That really inspired me. Well, I'll tell you what. We were, we have to make a deal. The deal is when they're doing that first launch to Mars, that somehow we need to be there at that launch pad. Oh, yeah. Because that is going to be, we're going to, a, a high five, <laughs> dead on that one. High I five. mean, can you, oh, <laughs> that is just, that would be, I mean, if you were there the moment that that uh, rocket takes off and actually goes to Mars, well, look, it, it, It'll take off and take another eight months to get there, but but just to be there for that moment will be something quite special. Yeah. So you're gonna have to free up your calendar on the twenty seventh, twenty eighth of March, twenty twenty seven. In fact, now let's do twenty seven twenty seven. I'm hoping that uh, that will be the date. Yeah, let's go. And, let's and we'll go be on series seventeen, I think, yeah. of of the Mars <laughs> series. <laughs> And, and hopefully there'll be a whole new adventure going on in the planet. That's amazing. That's amazing. That, that is going to be amazing. I, I just can't wait to, to see it. And I, I just can't wait. Seriously. Well, we, we look forward so to, to that I mean, moment so, coming. Uh -huh. it's, it's so great to have someone like, like Elon Musk, you know, like, you know, taking, you know, taking control of it and, and just trying things to make it happen. I think it's great. But you see, Elon Musk has only just popped up. There will be other Elon Musks popping up over the next yeah. 10 years who, sure. will, who might think even bigger than Elon Musk. So yeah, sure. no one knows sure. what the future holds. And I would be, uh, I mean, I think that the, what I hope the most, and I would be so happy if it happens, but if someone from the, first crew is uh, being interviewed and says, oh, I was inspired to go to Mars when I watched that TV series on National Geographic, that I would be so proud. I think and and that, like that's not too far-fetched because by the time we actually leave, they will be the right age to have been watching the National yeah. Geographic series and actually become the, the astronauts. So, Clemmy, we want to say thank you so much for giving up of your time. We really appreciate it. We need you to smile. You need to just smile at the camera like that so we can get a nice screenshot. There we go. Because sometimes what happens is YouTube, when it, when it uh, chooses its own picture, it gets you in the middle of a conversation like, oh, yeah, yeah. And then we like to put a different picture on just in case. So, merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Au revoir. 
and I'm going to stop the broadcast over here.